Welcome back to another episode of Frenchie's Forge. This week, I have a very exciting special guest making his first knife with me. I've got my younger brother, Jack. He is down from Columbia, hanging out with me. I've actually taken the day off today. Today's Friday, and uh, we're going to be making a knife, and I'm super pumped for it. It's going to be a really cool episode. It's going to be him kind of making his first knife and uh, we're going to walk through some of the processes of how one would go about making their first knife. Um, so he's down here for the long weekend and uh, we're going to have some fun together. We just went to uh, one of my favorite stores here in Nixa, OSL. Just picked up some more uh, supplies for handles. This is a piece of blood wood, $9 score. Also got a beautiful piece of walnut. It's just a really interesting grain. This was $3.30 score. And last but certainly not least, I've been looking for this stuff everywhere and just happened to find a chunk of it there. Some whinge. Look at the beautiful grain on that. That would make a very interesting knife handle. Uh, I've seen a lot of people use that in some knives that they've done. Uh, beautiful, all three are beautiful wood. Uh, so we've got Jack's dog, Peach. What's up, Peach? Hey, what you doing? Yes, you are a beautiful puppy. So we've got Miss Peach hanging out with us. And over here inside Frenchie's Forge, we have the special guest of the week. America. Brother Jack, hanging out in the forge. Thank you. Ayo! <laughs> <laughs> and we are settling on uh, a couple of different profiles. I think he might be working on one now. So about to see one of the most beautiful and sexiest designs you've ever seen in your life. Get ready. Look at that. That is master <laughs> craftsmanship <laughs> right there. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> We are definitely going to get something sketched out, and we're going to get something ground out, heat treated, and we're going to turn something into a blade. I am not sending this dude home without a knife. Stay tuned. Heidi, Heidi, ho! Hello! Oh, the wind was going good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Game face, bro. Game face. Game face, bro. Game face. <laughs> Yo, so we got a profile down, right? You know that beautiful drawing you saw? This is thy profile. And actually, pretty darn sleek little profile. Just a little, little rock. Don't know what you call it. A little kitchen. Going for like a kitchen, like you need to cut your carrots, your celery. Nice little, you know. Yeah. So we got that put on. What steel is this? So we're, we're to, we chose 5160. Well, we figure that uh, is going to make a pretty good steel for this type of knife. It's um, known for its good edge retention for those tough to cut carrots. Yep. So, uh, gotta this. Gotta retain that edge. Gotta retain the edge. <laughs> it's important that you just gotta I was do gonna it. gonna say you gotta retain the edge tension, but yes. like, yeah, that's not the right word. Yeah, but that's okay. So uh, we're going to get it cut out on the bandsaw. Our goal is to get it knocked back to shape as much as possible on the bandsaw, and then we're going to go over to the grinder to finish it off. And then we're going to partially grind in the bevels um, and get them about 80% done before we heat treat. So that is the goal for the next hour or two. What he said. Let's do it. Cool, cool.
basic shape down. <laughs> oh boy. It's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. But here we go. You know, it'll look better. It's what we gotta do. We gotta. We're. we're I'm a. I'm a wing it kind of guy. You know. So good start, I guess. Never made a knife before. Matt had to go get his oil changed, so it's just me by myself doing my thing. So we got the overall profiling done, and this thing is, what's up y'all? <laughs> <laughs> we got the overall profiling done, and now we're pretty much at the, a good point where we're gonna be ready to put the bevels in this historically awesome kitchen chopper. Notice how the blade material is very thick. So it's going to be a like good, good heavy chopper, but we're going to want to grind bevels pretty high up here to get rid of some of the material to lighten it up some. So what we're going to do first is we're going to mark our center line and put in our 45s along our center line to determine the apex of the edge before we start to grind the bevels. So to do that, we're going to be doing Sharpie right along the cutting edge. And then we're going to be using a set of calipers to scribe our center line. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> now, typically, when I do this... Uh, and I'm just here to be the Harry Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Vanna. She's amazing. Harry Vanna. She's so hairy. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> calipers, then you, then you say, okay, we're, we're at exactly a quarter inch. And it's okay that if it's not perfectly centered, because <clears throat> then we can just flip it around. Do another line, and then you got pretty much Hit a, between them. Yeah, a visual. So I think if we grind down to that, we ought to be all right. Look who showed up! So we got the middle brother Nick in the house. Y'all have seen Nick before on an episode. Welcome to Frenchie's Forge, middle brother. <laughs> so we're right in the middle of putting the initial bevels into Jack's knife. We're just kind of explaining what we've done. We've marked our center line here along the cutting edge, and then we're going to be going in and putting our 45 degree bevels on both sides to establish our apex. Um, we're not going to bring it down all the way, but we'll probably try to leave it like the thickness of a dime, maybe a dime or a nickel. And once we get that done, then we're going to start holding the knife out some to bring the bevels further down the blade. So I'm just going to do a couple of passes to establish the 45, and then Jack's going to finish it up. Hey, that's me.
like negative 10 right now. Uh, Brother Jack's warming up and I'm out here. Uh, we're gonna run some thermo cycles on the blade before we quench. By cycling the forge on and off, we're going to hopefully hold that temperature. So we'll let that hang in there and cool for a little bit and uh, yeah and then the objective for tomorrow once we get this thing tempered in the oven probably do that tonight uh, we're going to clean up the bevels and get those uh, finished up and looking pretty decent and then we're gonna pick out some handle material and uh, try to maybe prep that and get that ready and once we have the bevels and the handle material prepped and ready, we'll probably try to glue them up by tomorrow. Maybe start working on some of the finer stuff. Uh, but really, Sunday will be the day where we're going to try to uh, hand sand everything down to the final finish. Oh, yeah. I'm putting my hands in my pockets now. Peace. Deuces. <laughs> So Matt has the blade in the oven. He is either annealing it or tempering it. Not really sure the difference between the two. He's told me like three times so far. I keep forgetting. Um, but in the meantime, while he's doing that, I'm working on finding something for handle material. Uh, I got those woods. And so I think I'm gonna do like a walnut. I've already cut one piece. But what we did is this is the original uh, shape after we got done uh last night what did we do to it so this is the original <sighs> this was the original outline of the blade but we wanted to put more i'm probably gonna get all this wrong so uh he'll tell me what's right anyway so we have taken and we have rounded out the tip a little bit. I've cut off this belly portion right here so it rocks a little better. And then I've also made a little bit more uh, finger room for my knuckles to go underneath of the handle here. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm working on. I've just cut one piece. Now I'm about to cut the other. Uh, and then we'll go from there. I might throw in another piece of wood uh, just as an accent. I'm working with walnut right now, and then I have uh, this cherry wood I think I'm going to mix in there. So we'll see what happens. Let's do it.
Just bring it back. Let's do it. So now we're just gonna do some sanding to thin these guys out. Um, Chiku, too chunky. We're gonna cut it down. <laughs> cut it down, down, and a little one now. Damn it, damn it, damn it, roll it. I said, I, da, 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 I don't know the words, but something about uh, cock it and pull it. I'm going down, down. Okay, there's my touch. That's why I'm here, folks. So it's Saturday morning. We made dun, dun, some. Dun, dun, Saturday. Yo 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 yo. Saturday. All right. So Saturday morning, we made some really good progress last night. We got this thing ground profiled out we got the preheat treat bevels we got a little bit of work to do with those but hey we're we're sitting pretty now jack just explained in the last clip of how he went about cutting out these segmented scales and uh, we are ready to rock and roll we're going to get those glued up and while they're drying we're going to then turn our attention to working on this blade let's get it yes sir cool so we just got some five minute epoxy here yeah. so jb well gonna do a little squirt squirt and then I'm going to use black uh, pigment to dye the epoxy, just in case if some of it leaks out and this it squeezes out. Good idea. Uh, we got some black liner. What is this called again? I couldn't. Uh, vulcanized paper. Vulcanized paper. Volcano paper. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So if it squeezes out, we uh, hopefully will match the color of the vulcanized paper, and it won't be noticeable. So yeah, we gonna squeeze her out now. <laughs> shop and we did uh, quite a bit of work on the knife getting the bevels finished up and they are looking looking pretty clean looking pretty smooth so I kind of ran through the process of that with Jack and uh, they turned out pretty wicked good we got the holes drilled and he's back here working on the handle um, pretty much got the uh, epoxy time to dry and we just took them out of the clamps and uh, he is working on knocking them back to like a rectangle shape. He actually has one of them done. Uh, right here. Woo, that's looking pretty smooth. So he decided to go with the uh, walnut, I believe that's walnut and cherry with the black liners. Um, and I think it's gonna be looking Pretty sweet. Not a bad little kitchen knife right there for his first knife. It's gonna be pretty cool. So we're gonna let him finish up getting the other side of the scale done. And then we're gonna walk through some of the processes of getting these ready to be shaped and glued on. Yeah. I really gotta say, for his first time doing this, it's turning out actually really pretty good. You can tell he definitely has the, uh, kind of the Mr. Fix-It vibe. He's definitely a hands-on type of guy, like myself. He does other stuff too. Uh, he turns wood on a lathe. He does stuff with epoxy. Uh, he has a 3D printer, he likes to do that. So he's kind of the arts and crafts sort of maker type guy, like myself. Uh, Anyway, we'll let him finish up and then we'll catch back up with you here in just a second. 
All right, so what I got going on here, uh, I sanded both of my scales separately so they're not even. And in order to get the hole placement for the micarta pens that we're going to put in, uh, we I'm going to go ahead, we've clamped them together, and I'm going to go ahead and sand them as one unit so they're as close to being exactly the same. That way, whenever we drill holes on one side, we can just transfer those holes over to the other side. Um, we were going to try to put, just clamp these together, align them, put the knife handle on top, and then drill it down, straight down. But sometimes the bit wanders, and so you might have a hole here, but it comes out on this side. Because it, I mean, that's obviously exaggerated, but you get what I'm saying. Perfect so, explanation. I'm going to hit the sander up, y'all. Pretty good? Did I do a good job? Did I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Yeah, dude. You did. You did really really hard for me not to want to jump in there but I'm doing my best at staying out and letting him make this knife good job Matt so we got this dude taped up we got both sides of the scales pretty even got it taped up Jackie Pitt is gonna drill it All right, so we're wrapping up Saturday night. We're getting ready to go eat dinner, but before we do that, we are ready to glue up our handles to the knife. Oh yeah. And I must say, Jack has done an excellent job of all of his work has been really, really awesome. Very, what do you expect? Huh? Very, <laughs> very, very stellar work. So why we, thank you. He is now getting ready to glue these bad boys up. We're going to let her dry overnight. Then we'll be back out Sunday morning to finish shaping this knife and put an edge on it. Then it'll be ready to chop them carrots. Yeah, boy. It'll be ready to chop them celeries. It'll be ready to chop them broccolis. It'll be ready to chop them whatever he going to be chopping is going to be chopping all right. You know who's chopping? Peach. She's cutting the cheese, cause boo! Dang, bro. <laughs> Peach, you got a stinky butt, dude. Yeah, you wanna go outside? Let's do that. <laughs> go. Bad Peach. Go. Thanks, bud. Man, that's <laughs> your dog have a stink butthole. <laughs> your dog have a stinky booty. <laughs> Ooh, say it ain't so, y'all. up y'all oh hey didn't see you there <laughs> so and you're uh, watching disney channel okay yeah so <laughs> we got the scales uh on here but as you can see they were they were just lined up a little out of line so we've got a little bit of the spine sticking out which isn't a big deal at all we're just going to knock the spine back down to the level of the scales so to do that we got the horizontal grinder going 
and we're just using a really low grit. I think this 3640, 3640 grit, something like that. We're going to put it up here and knock the spine back to match the scales. See ya, buddies. <laughs> pausing uh making sure there's enough time for the blade to cool down uh one for the blade integrity and then uh two for the epoxy i don't want to melt the epoxy which it's not gummy yet so we're we're good but yeah uh just gonna let it cool down and then i'm gonna hop back on it and then the next thing we're gonna go to the bandsaw and take off a bunch of this chunk so now that Jack spent a little bit of time knocking this back down to the spine and got it looking looking pretty good, we're now ready to take out some of the width of the handle. So to do that, we're going to run it on the bandsaw. I think he explained earlier that we're going to be um, kind of going on the lines that he's marked here just to get rid of some of the width. oscillating spindle sander to get uh, in that little choil, finger choil area right behind the ricasso. We use that same, uh, I think it's a three quarter inch radius to pretty much grind out that area. So we're gonna reuse that same drum to get in there and clean it up some. That is definitely a great tool if you don't have a small wheel attachment. Um, you know, otherwise you're pretty much limited to like Dremel bits and stuff. Definitely worthwhile checking this machine out. The oscillating spindle sander has been uh, invaluable for me. to the final shape and we're now doing some sanding, hand sanding to get to the final contours. We're getting close. It's like uh, maybe another hour and a half of this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we just got the sharpening station set up here and I just went over it with Jack. I think he's going to go ahead and try to put an edge on this. I got faith in him. He's going to do a good job. 
Here we go. All right. So we just got an edge put on to Jack's blade. Let's go ahead and give it a little test. Ooh, very nice, very nice. Definitely cuts paper. Let's whack some wood. Whoo, this thing is sharp, dog. You did good. Paper correctly. See if it'll shave arm hairs. I don't have I don't have many left. Hey, you want some of mine? <laughs> Popping a couple arm hairs, perhaps. He's hairy, hairy. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to hurt you. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, uh, I think, man, for doing doing 99% of this by yourself, this thing turned out great. Not only is it a good chopper, but it's going to kill some carrots. Carrot, 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 Heck yeah, dog. I, no, no deformations, no rolls. I hit that pretty good. Literally nothing. Try some uh, cardboard. Give a little charge up to some cardboard. There ain't nothing better than cutting some stuff. And action. Choppy chop some cardboard. That knife is a cardboard killer. Chumpy chop some cardboard. <laughs> what you think, Peach? We got a cardboard, paper, wood, carrot, cut, and killer. All right, so we just put an edge onto Jack's knife, and judging by our floor, you can tell we are testing it some. Jack is going to be the final judge of whether his knife turned out good or bad. This will determine whether it's good or bad. Is it bad? I don't think so. I think he's a good. A shing, a shing, a shing. A shing! A shing! A shing! Did you put a hole in my roof? A shing! Well, here. You might have with that sharp, sharp carrot killer. A shing! <laughs> you can cut and, pay and post and, and edit the good one. <laughs> this thing is sharp as heck, though, dude. Uh, what a what a killer knife! That, shing, that thing shing, is awesome. Shing, shing. A shing. So overall, what do you think about the whole knife making process? Did you enjoy this knife? Would you do it again? Is it a hobby you think you could get into? A uh, thousand percent, yes. I loved it. Um, yeah, I mean it's right up my alley. I do. I work with wood a lot. Um, I just do like real small things, like real. Uh, exactly like this like having to get into the corner sanding the tops of this and trying not to scratch the metal uh just very tedious it's very um uh, what's the word i'm looking for um here's some of his pieces for his cutting board he's gonna make so he's gonna make a cutting board to go with his killer cutting knife uh-huh yeah it's very uh therapeutic and relaxing to just get in here and grind away sand away Shing shing away. 100% yeah, agree. It's awesome. I appreciate you being here this weekend making a knife with your brother. Heck yeah, thanks for having me, brother man. It's been fun. Let's get some close ups of that carrot killing cutter. Carrot.
spectacular. Absolutely disgustingly beautiful work, little brother. I think she's pretty pretty. Indeed. Pretty 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 hot. Pretty friggin' pretty sexy. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Very, very nice. I can tell you what, definitely better than my first knife, that's for sure. Appreciate you guys sticking around for episode Deuce Deuce with Jack LaDeuce. We'll catch you boys and gals and girls on the next one. Deuce! <laughs> <laughs>